you live to Canberra now. Our political editor, Andrew Clonell, joins us. Andrew, already in Canberra, uh, exciting at times. Now we have one of the headlines early, as we do every year. Pretty optimistic, do you think, from Jim Chalmers? Heroic, I would call it, Laura. <laughs> and let's make no mistake about this. Jim Chalmers has staked his reputation as Treasurer on this inflation forecast. He can't just blame Treasury for it. He must have worked it up with Stephen Kennedy. And I was surprised when I had him on Sunday Agenda yesterday. After Michelle Bullock's numbers came out last week, I said... Surely your estimate of inflation this year is higher than the 2.75% that was in my EFO in December. And he said, I wouldn't assume that. Then last night they put out the numbers and I could scarcely believe it. But let's look at the political alternative to doing that, to having a figure next financial year within the range of the Reserve Bank in terms of inflation. If he hadn't, the headline would have been no rate cut before the election. That would have been the budget headline, if they'd said it was going to stay at over 3%. Now, he says there are things in the budget that will make this inflation go down. That's yet to be seen. And I've been reporting for a week there's going to be rental assistance in there. My understanding, Laura, is the increase is not going to be as big as the 15% increase to that last year, but there is an increase in the budget. And the Treasurer indicated yesterday there was a partial extension of the energy bill relief scheme. Of course, there is one way to get to 2.75% by the end of the year in terms of inflation, Laura. That's another rate hike. That would probably do it. Let's have a listen to my exchange with the Treasury yesterday. In the RBA's monetary statement, they have inflation still at 3.8% in December this year, 3.6% June 2025, 3.4% December 2025. 3.3 June 2026. So then we're not even within the 2 to 3% band they want inflation at in 2026. Could they be thinking they don't cut rates by then or at least cut them maybe once and that's it? Well, Governor Bullock had opportunities to, to talk about her own forecasts. Um, our forecasts take the budget into consideration, so they'll be a little bit different. It's just a function of timing, not a function of opinion. Even with that inflation figure that we got for the most recent quarter, uh, we are still travelling better in annual inflation than we expected in the mid-year update in December. We're actually ahead of that. And the near-term Reserve Bank forecasts are broadly consistent uh, with what we thought in December as well. So we're, we're making progress uh, on the, in the fight against inflation, but it's not mission accomplished because people are still under the pump and that's why inflation is a big focus of the budget. So Jim Chalmers says he's not disagreeing with Michelle Bullock necessarily. It's a matter of timing, not opinion. She hasn't seen his budget yet. Mm. And the other argument they have as a strength, I guess, is they'll pretty much bang on on the forecast for inflation. At the moment, it's 3.6%. They said it'd be 3.75%. But we've seen around the world how inflation is just sticking around. And is a bit of rental assistance and energy bill relief really enough to bring it back down under that target band? I'm very sceptical about it. We discussed these cost of living measures here. We've shown a willingness in the past uh, to take the edge off uh, electricity uh, bills uh, and, and rent in previous budgets. Uh, the cost of living relief in this budget will be, it won't be identical to what we've seen in the past. Uh, but it will be substantial uh, and it will be in addition to that tax cut for, for every taxpayer. We've spoken a lot in the early months of this year, Andrew, about Stage 3 tax cuts. Of course, there's Labor's new Stage 3 tax cuts now. What, what's going to happen here this week on those? Do you think it will be this week that the opposition comes up with an alternative? Well, I think the opposition will flag an alternative in Peter Dutton's budget reply speech on Thursday. I don't think they'll uh, actually say these are going to be the tax brackets. But we saw this more in Jane Hume. I, I know you have her on from time to time. The Shadow Finance Minister on with me yesterday, basically indicating there's a package coming. We have made this very clear from the beginning that the coalition will always stand up for lower, simpler, fairer taxes for businesses and for households. You will see a tax policy from the coalition to the next election that restores the balance. Of course, them coming forward with a package for the next election would be helped by inflation coming down as well, ironically. Well, Jim Chalmers is saying if you go with 
The tax cuts at the top end, Scott Morrison had that I removed, plus my package. That's an extra $40 billion over four years. Where are you getting that from? Well, let's see whether they're going to unwind uh, our fairer cost of living tax cuts for middle Australia. They are all over the shop when it comes to these tax cuts. If they're going to give bigger tax cuts for people who are already in the highest incomes, they need to say on Thursday night how they'll pay for that. So let's not forget, Laura, on Tuesday night, as of July 1, we'll be announcing on July 1, $23 billion worth of tax cuts to be poured into the economy. Jim Chalmers argues that's not inflationary. That's right, he says, and he has said since January and so of Treasury, that's not inflationary. And he says he can get to 2.75% this year. Well, it would be some sort of Christmas present, Laura. If that <laughs> were to occur, I might start believing in Santa Claus again myself.